Week two of the high school football season actually gets started tonight with a pair of games in the Colonial Schuylkill League to help us get ready for the second week on the high school gridiron. Let's bring in our resident football guru, Doug Heater. Doug, first of all, good to have you back in studio. It feels like football season officially yes. now. I was extremely disappointed that I missed last I know, week. I know, yes. but we've got you back now yes. and, and we're looking forward. It's glass half full. Uh, week two starts tonight, but, but before we get to week two, let's go back to week one quickly. Uh, some of your biggest takeaways from week one. All right, Parkland is the Alabama of high school football. Okay. All right, that's it right there. Let's get that out of the way. Now, here's what I think. Parkland, Freedom, Nazareth, and Emmaus, I think right now, are your four best teams week one. It's the overreaction week. But I think two teams that could sneak in there that are going to be tough outs are Beckett Central Catholic. Two teams that aren't in the 6A classification but are going to be tough teams. Okay, so Parkland is your Alabama. I'll say my, my quick takeaways from week one, Emmaus's defense is legit mm -hmm. again, and Nazareth's offense is legit yep. again. Uh, but we'll see what week two has in store. We've got two featured games for you live here on the Service Electric Network on Channel 2. We've got Parkland going to Nazareth to take on the Blue Eagles. And your first play you're going to break down for us comes from the Trojans. Well, Parkland obviously last week, the challenge I thought watching the game at home on Friday night was how the offensive line was going to play. So I have a play, what I picked from, and you guys talked about it. You and Mike Brusco said that Tim Monsman said that Parkland has the most athletic or potentially the most dynamic skill position players that they have. So Marquez Wimberly's 64 yard run is the one we're going to talk about. What I liked about this play is how well executed Parkland runs a basic sweep play. Wimberly is located outside. Let's go ahead and roll it and see what Parkland does right. Now, first of all, slot receiver is Nakai Bullock. So what he wants to do is he wants to make sure he takes this defender with him toward the center of the field. As you can see, all the defenders are leaning in this direction. So he wants to make sure he gets this defender leading this way. And Jendel Sanchez is the outside receiver. If he doesn't block well this defender here, this play does not go for positive yardage. So outside Wimberley comes with Trey Tremble leading the way. So Nakai Bullock has made the block in the open field on the, the, the outs, the, on the middle linebacker here. Now, Ali Weza, the right tackle, has also sealed two defensive players for Easton, allowing Wimberly and Tremba to get to the outside, and Jendel Sanchez is here. So watch what happens here. Sanchez, now what do I always say about this? What's nice about this? But to the hole. He has turned the defender to the outside of the play, allowing Tremba and Wimberly to run right through here, right behind the butt. Butt to the hole. Here's the play. Now, this is what's great about this play. Tremba, that's the way you want to teach blocking in the open field is you hit the shoulder with that lead foot, right shoulder, right foot, right into the defender, blocking him, not holding him, blocking him, moving out of the way, and the rest of it is Wimberly's speed. Executed perfectly, an extremely basic sweep play that Parkland runs executed perfectly. Mike Brusco said it during the broadcast. I have said it many times before. You want to run the outside, you got to make sure those receivers block, and Parkland was able to get that job done. 64 yards scoring scamper that made it 35-0 before halftime. Oh, by the way, that was Wimberly, who's a freshman, his yes. third varsity carry. Uh, Parkland has a team rushed for over 200 yards last week. They really got it done on the ground. Again, they are at Nazareth coming up tomorrow. Our other live featured game coming up tomorrow, Whitehall at Liberty. A couple of teams looking for their first wins of the season. Hurricanes were hard luck losers last week, and you've got a play to break down from their performance against Central Catholic. So Liberty is a team that I was really excited to watch I really broke this game down tightly to get ready for tomorrow night's game and what I did is I picked a play that Liberty ran now what this is is going to be a fake jet sweep with Tommy Mason keeping it now Liberty ran the jet sweep the second play of the game and why that's important is as you see as we roll the play the entire offense goes in that direction so we have right here Marcus Askernice this is going to be the jet sweep motion so he's going to lead that way now look at this defender here is crashing into the line because he thinks he's going to get the tackle in the backfield. This defender up here, the free safety, is also sprinting toward this open space. Everybody is looking in this direction because remember, two plays ago, they ran this jet sweep motion. So Mason will keep the ball, take it out of the belly of Asternis. Now, he's got, he's got two blockers right here. Nolan, or Jordan Bartholomew, the center, has sealed the block, so Mason wants to run right here is where his vision is, and he's got the right tackle. 
Delvin Rodriguez leading the way coming out on this side. Here's Rodriguez making the block, and he's got Jelani Leslie behind him. So Mason can come up right through here to get behind the play. Remember, the flow is going in that direction. He cuts it back up the middle. He comes behind both defenders. Now, here's Kareem Bryce, a wide receiver. Look what he's doing here. He's directing traffic. He's telling Mason, go behind me, because what Bryce does is gets a shoulder in the defender just enough, doesn't block him from behind, doesn't hold him, allowing Tommy Mason to get to the outside, run to the sideline, and sprint to pay dirt. What I liked about this play, first of all, Mason is going to be a great offensive player because he had a couple of nice passes in the game on Saturday against Central, a couple of key drops by Liberty as well that could have been potentially uh, big gainers. But Mason is a dynamic player that really puts a lot of stress on the defense. I like the fact that they set that play up by running that jet sweep two plays earlier. Liberty lost a 34-28 decision against Central Catholic, but the Hurricanes had four different leads in mm -hmm. that ball game. They appear to have the pieces to have a real turnaround season here in 2022. As we look ahead to Week 2 action, Doug, give us a, a bold prediction or two for this coming week's action. All right, I think Liberty can win five games. Okay. All right, I think Liberty can win five games. Now, they'd have to get an upset in there somewhere, but I think that's team good enough to win five games that may lean that other way. I also think, here's this is bold now, remember, this is going to be off the radar okay. wild. Right. I think Central Catholic can beat Emmaus on Friday night. Okay, you've got Central over Emmaus. My bold prediction for the week, I'm going to say that Nazareth and Parkland combined for more total points than they did a year ago. Oh, by the way, Parkland won that game 43-40. to 40. Wow, that's a nice so I'm, one. So I'm taking 83 and a half. I'm taking the over, <laughs> the over on Parkland one. and Nazareth. Uh, an exciting week, too. Doug, thanks so much for helping break, us break it down. Uh, looking forward to having you back tomorrow for College Football Game Guide. Uh, looking forward to that one as well, yes.